Okay, so this is the second in uh, the second of the system properties overview videos. And as you can see, um, we've drawn a system that has an input and an output. And then we've uh, conveniently described the two properties that we're going to talk about, linearity and time invariance. Now, um, in this video, we're only going to discuss conceptually what linearity and time invariance are. In other videos, we'll talk about how to actually determine if a system is linear or if a system is time invariant. So the first question is that you might ask is why do you care if something's linear and or time invariant? The answer to that is that if a system is linear and time invariant, so we abbreviate that LTI, if you have a linear time invariant system, then all sorts of beautiful things happen. You can use transform analysis to determine what the output of the system will be in terms of an input. Uh, typically, uh, the two that you see are Laplace, which is used to characterize how systems um, behave over time, and Fourier, which is used to characterize how systems behave in terms of frequencies. Uh, both of these are extremely useful in the sense that, uh, for example, if you have an, a linear time invariant system, uh, it's very easy using Laplace transforms to determine whether or not the system is stable. It's very easy using Laplace transforms to determine how the system is going to respond to given inputs. It's very easy, well, sort of very easy, actually not all that easy, using Laplace transforms to put together a control system that will, or a control algorithm that will make your system do things you want it to do. Um, again, if a system is linear and time invariant, uh, you can use frequency domain techniques, uh, Fourier domain, to um, do things like design um, uh, communication systems or design audio systems and so on. So linearity and time invariance are extremely important. And what usually happens in a uh, signals and systems course is by the time you finish it, you forget that there's anything but linear and time invariant systems because you've spent so much time dealing only with linear and time invariant systems. So that may be OK because um, most of the systems that we deal with, we deal with linear systems because of uh, this whole business with the transforms works so well. And in fact, there are techniques to take a system that's nonlinear and uh, essentially approximate it by um, a linear system to get stuff that you, or to get information that you want to get. And time invariant, you can also approximate a time varying system by some uh, constant approximation for a little bit. So, what do these two things mean? Linearity basically means that um, superposition holds. So, if I can figure out the output of the system to a particular input x1, say this leads us to an output y1, and if I can then figure out the output of the system to a different output, and that output would be y2, then any input that I can make by adding or subtracting x1 and x2 or scaling x1 and x2, um, once I know, or, or if I can scale the inputs, then I can scale the outputs. And for example, the response of the system to the sum of x1 and x2 is the sum of y1 and y2. Uh, we'll, again, in another video, make that more mathematically precise. But that's handy because it means that if I can figure out how the system responds to a particular input, and I can express other inputs in terms of this particular input, then I can tell you how the system will respond to these other inputs. That's really useful. Time invariance means 
that the system doesn't change through time. So if I run a signal through a system today and run the same signal through the same system tomorrow, I'll get the same result tomorrow as I did today. Um, that turns out to be useful uh, because, um, well, actually, then linearity and time invariance, so these two guys together are useful because it turns out that I can make a whole bunch of signals out of time shifted or sums of time shifted signals which means that if I can tell you how the system responds to one signal then I can tell you how the system is going to respond to sums of time of that signal time shifted which basically means I can characterize the system and uh, uh, we actually characterize it using what's called a transform or a transfer function which um, will show up several videos later, or a frequency response. And if I know the transfer function or the frequency response, I can tell you everything about the system that there is to know. So that's why linearity and time invariance are important. So um, in subsequent videos, we'll actually sh show how to determine whether a system's linear or time invariant and do some, do some examples. Um, so that pretty much wraps up this video.